You're right. Thank you for joining us here at Willow Creek Presbyterian for worship this week. I'm Lauren, the pastor here, and I have a few announcements to share with you before we begin worship. Our congregational meeting is Sunday, November 22nd, probably the day that you're watching this, at 11 a.m. on Zoom. The Zoom link and info was sent to you in the updates email this week. At this meeting, we will approve the slate of officers for the upcoming year, as well as my terms of call. I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who made our drive through handball dinner possible, as well as the Advent kits. Thank you to all of the folks who made handballs and to those who helped organize and put everything together. And that team included Rebecca Landy, Marin Reed, Molly and Charlie Shipton, and April Rotman. So thank you all for making that happen. Next Sunday, we will begin our Advent study on hymns of the season. It will be on Zoom each Sunday of Advent at 11 a.m., and the link will be sent in the updates email each week. I look forward to learning with you about Advent through some of our favorite hymns. There are a lot of things that we miss about worshiping together in our sanctuary, and we keep wondering how to bring some of those missed things to you. One way we are doing that is through our hymnal lending library. If you would like to check out a hymnal for the remainder of the pandemic, let us know. Call or email the church office or me, and we will find a way to get a hymnal to you that you can use while you're worshiping at home. Instead of a children's moment during our service today, some of our youth and kids have put together a thankful video that you'll definitely want to watch. It will be available on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, um, and it will just be a separate video from the worship service. So be sure to check it out and see what the kids are thankful for. And Annie Pickham is one, the one who edited that video together, and we are so thankful for her work on that, as well as her amazing leadership on the recording team, guiding us through all of the technology stuff. She is leaving this Sunday for another deployment with the National Guard. Annie, we will miss you, and we keep you and your family in our prayers. Thank you for everything you do for our church and also for your service to our country. All right, at this time, will you join your hearts with me in prayer as we prepare for worship? Eternal God, you set Jesus Christ to rule over all things. By your Spirit, empower us to love the unloved and to minister to all in need. Remind us it is you who reigns, allowing us to leave our concerns and be fully present with you. Amen. Please join me together, join with me to the the call to worship. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Christ will reign forever and ever. God has established the world, and God's realm will never be shaken. Christ will reign forever and ever. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of God. Christ will reign forever and ever. Now let's join in hymn number 263 as printed in your bulletin, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
Even the angels fall at Jesus' feet. We too fall. We do not come to Christ bearing claims of goodness, but confession of sin. We fall at the feet of Christ, eager to worship by confessing. Remember once again that it is God's grace and goodness, not our own, that we live by. Please join me in the prayer of confession found in your bulletin. Righteous God, reigning Christ, reassuring spirit, we confess that we have often put other priorities ahead of our loyalty to you. We focus on ourselves and become unable to tend to those in need. We obsess on our own desires to the determinant of your creation. We dismiss those without earthly status and seek out those we think can benefit us. We forget that following you means caring for those most in need of compassion and relief. Forgive us, Good Shepherd, and turn us again toward you. Shape us into a people who better resemble you, Christ our King. God has rescued us from the power of evil and claimed us for the realm of Jesus Christ in whom we have redemption. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. the peace of Christ be with you and also also with you. Sovereign God, let your world rule in our hearts and your spirit govern our lives until at last we see the fulfillment of your realm of justice and peace Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, And he will separate people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick, or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, 
Just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Eter the Gospel of our risen Savior. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's passage finds our Good Shepherd not in a pasture, but in the glorious throne room of the heavenly realm, inviting us with another parable into the reign of Christ. Grateful for the invitation, we wonder, what realm is this? Where a shepherd sits on the throne, where glory is a little dusty, where the sheep are separated from the goats. Earthy, humble shepherd amid the indescribable shine and song of angels is a glimpse ahead to the Christmas story. Next week, is the beginning of Advent, when we start our walk toward the manger. But as Christmas decorations fill the stores, and as our tired souls long for something familiar to be excited about, who can wait another week? We are already turning toward the star that led the humble shepherds, accompanied by the shocking glory of angel song, to welcome a new realm bursting in with a piercing, needy newborns cry. That sweet scene in the humble manger is a description of the reign of Christ, and that Christ is the same one who sorts the sheeps, the sheep from the goats, in the splendor of glory. Today is Reign of Christ Sunday, the end of our liturgical year that is mostly stretches of ordinary time, marked by green, punctuated by the seasons of Advent, Christmas, Lent, and Easter, and Pentecost Sunday. And that liturgical year ends on this celebratory reminder that Christ reigns, a hopeful reminder, a joy-filled reality for those who find dwelling in this earthly realm a bit trying at times. But what realm is this? At a glance, the description of Christ's rule is rather disconcerting. If you are convinced you are a sheep, perhaps it's a comforting image. If you are not sure, or if you are convinced that you are a goat, comforting is not the best word. It may be encouraging, as in encouraging us to behave more like the sheep, but is encouragement through fear of eternal suffering how Jesus usually taught and led? Not usually. More often in Matthew than the other Gospels do we see this glimpse of Christ. And certainly this is part of, Jesus, of who Jesus is, a judge. This is an aspect of the realm we celebrate this reign of Christ Sunday. An aspect, but not the whole story a certain point, but not the whole shape. Remembering that today's parable is a continuation of last week's story, coming at the end of the long explanation Jesus offers the disciples on how to wait for Christ's return. We can see that while this is a final judgment scene, it's being given to us well in advance of the final judgment. It's like an open book exam 
What matters to the heart of the good, glorious shepherd is not a mystery, but it's explicitly described. The sheep, the righteous and blessed ones, are those who, according to Christ, fed, quenched, welcomed, covered, and visited when they saw Jesus had those needs. But they are confused, wondering when it was Jesus that they saw. Christ answers, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of the members of my family, you did it to me. As you did it to the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. What realm is this where the one on the glorious throne says, the least of these are members of my family, where the family of the Almighty Judge includes the most unlikely siblings, sisters and brothers who are hungry, hungry for food and for the opportunity to provide food for their families, hungry for righteousness, brothers and sisters who are dying of thirst as they cross deserts and seas in search of safe harbor, who count emptied plastic bottles, grocery money spent on drinkable water because the tap water is toxic, who thirst as they walk a dusty path to fill containers at a dirty riverbank or overused well that is miles away, thirsty for righteousness. Strangers, as we sketch meaning from the certain points of scripture, our calling to welcome strangers is something we can plot in pen, in sharpie, with confidence. From Genesis on, we are called to welcome travelers and foreigners, no matter where they come from, no matter how they got here. Not once in scripture are we told we don't have to welcome the stranger because they took the wrong path. Our only role in Christ's realm is to welcome. Christ's family includes the naked, those who dwell in exposed vulnerability. It doesn't matter how they came to need so much. What matters, according to the good, glorious shepherd, is that we cover, comfort, and offer restored dignity. Not because vulnerability is offensive, but because in this realm where Christ reigns, no one remains cold. Sisters and brothers who are sick, we bring chicken soup and groceries when neighbors fall ill. We give and pray when we hear of families suffering prolonged illnesses. And we care for the sick by wearing masks, by staying socially distant, by making difficult choices for holiday gatherings. Because every risk taken during a pandemic is not an individual risk, but a risk that impacts the resources the very sick currently need and impacts the health care providers who have needed a nap since March. We care for the sick by caring for those who care for the sick. We care for the sick by making choices that feel like sacrifices, a mask, an online worship service, another Zoom, a smaller, simpler Thanksgiving. Christ's family includes brothers and sisters who are incarcerated. What does it mean for us to visit those who are in prison? In the Bible, a prison visit may have meant bringing food to Paul and his friends in prison for sharing the gospel, joining them in singing hymns and perhaps witnessing a miracle. In our world, which is still always a world where Christ reigns, a prison visit is different. It might be uncomfortable. It might mean setting aside some presumptions about good and bad and right and wrong. For us today, as we remain concerned about caring for the sick, visiting those who are in prison might start with learning more, perhaps listening to a podcast like Serial Season 3, or reading a book like The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander, or watching a movie like Just Mercy, or a documentary like 13th. Learning more so we are better prepared to see, hear, and have compassion when we are able to answer Christ's call to visit those who are in prison. These are the ones Jesus calls family and says, that was me 
When you did that for them, you did it for me. The goats, the ones who are cursed, sent to eternal punishment, are not accused of ignoring the hungry and thirsty, of leaving the stranger in the cold, abandoning the naked to their vulnerability, refusing to care for the sick, or forgetting the prisoners. It's not that they never fed, quenched, welcomed, covered, cared, or visited. They simply, if, if they had simply never done these things, they would have heard, you gave me no food, you gave me nothing to drink, and thought, oh, true, we didn't do those things. But instead, they ask, when was it that we saw you, Jesus? Suggesting they had a willingness to feed some, to quench some, to welcome some, just not all. Not the ones Jesus calls the least of these and family. This story invites us to wonder if we are more sheep-like or goat-like, to wonder if we've put up barriers to who we're willing to feed, quench, welcome, cover, and visit. And this story encourages us to change behavior. This story can do that, but it is also more than that. This parable helps us understand who Christ is, the good shepherd on glorious throne, who would sooner reject the forgetters than the forgotten. Are we the forgetters of the forgotten? Are there barriers in our hearts? Are there folks whose needs make us look away rather than look more closely? Are there competing stories in our culture that confuse us about who matters most? Because Jesus reminds us today that those who need the most are the family of Christ. This is the realm of Christ we celebrate a shepherd seated on the throne of glory. Remember what happens when we seek the glory of God? We come face to face with the image of God that is indelibly stamped on every other, every neighbor, every friend, every stranger. As we learn to be more Christ-like, we more clearly see God in those the world rejects, judges, and forgets. And as we grow to be more Christ-like, understanding that the forgotten are the ones Christ identifies with, we have to wonder, are we called to be like them? Are we called to be like the least of these? Are we called to be hungry and thirsty? For righteousness, yes. Are we called to be the stranger, the traveler, the visitor, the immigrant, the refugee? If we are not called to leave our homes, we are unquestionably called to never forget that those who have left their homes follow in holy footsteps and are called the sister and brother of Christ. Are we called to be as vulnerable as the one who needs clothes? Yes, we are called to be vulnerable, to live exposed and aware of a harsh world Because the harshness of this world is not the most true thing. The realm of Christ is more true. Are we called to be sick? We are called to rest and receive like the sick must. We are called to be as dependent as one who cannot care for themselves, to cling to humility in Christ more than our perceived strength and ability. Are we called to be incarcerated? I don't know, but I do know this. We are called to question systems that incarcerate and to remember that humans have always failed at doing justice and to remember that in Christ's realm, the judge is a shepherd. We are certainly called not only to the activity of meeting the needs of the thirsty, stranger, naked, sick, and in prison, but to also believe those folks show us Jesus. 
This is what separated the sheep and the goats. Everyone before the throne did the feeding and quenching and clothing and welcoming and visiting. Whether or not the food pantry and baby angel closet are stocked was not the issue. The issue was what the goats saw, that they saw those they served differently than the sheep did. The goats had barriers in their systems, processes, vision, and hearts. They had limits to who they would serve and how. They were generous, they gave, but something prevented them from giving to the brothers and sisters of Christ. It seems then that this isn't only about simply giving, but about our hearts. And whether or not our compassion is unfettered, like the ones Christ calls best. Whether or not we accidentally serve Jesus because we see the ones who need the most as Jesus sees them. As family, as reflections of God who teach us about the one who reigns. Today's story reminds us who the Christ who reigns is. This son of man and son of God. This dusty, humble shepherd and the glorious one most high. This baby in the manger and judge on the throne. Greeted by sheep, goats, and magi. The realm where Christ reigns is one where love reigns. Where the hungry, thirsty, vulnerable, desperate, outsiders, and entrapped are our guides to encountering the one who reigns. Amen. Now, as we reflect on the realm where Christ reigns, may we be open to how God is moving us to give and to more clearly see Jesus in those who need the most. Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth and song? burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long oh yes he cares I know he cares his heart is touched by my grief when the days are weary and long nights dreary Good and glorious shepherd, reminded of your covering, nourishing grace, 
we are moved to give so that others may know your sovereignty and provision. May we always see you in the vulnerability of others and give without question. We give ourselves and these gifts to the work and the gra and grace of your reign. Amen. Will you join your hearts with me in prayer? Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, we are grateful to remember that you reign. We are not in control. You are. No earthly power rules. You do. These reminders comfort us and help us to see our concerns and burdens differently. We pray for those who are sick, those who care for the sick, those who grieve and those who care for the grieving. We know that you are present in all kinds of suffering and that you are particularly present with those who mourn as you Christ wept when you walked the earth and you who Christ called Father know the grief of a loved one's suffering and death. May we feel your presence and find comfort there. We pray to see the world as you do, to be more like our glorious shepherd who calls those who need the most family. May we be humbled as we learn to be guided by those the world has forgotten. We pray for those who are hungry and are frustrated that many of us plan feasts of celebration while others line up at food pantries across this nation. Help us to heal this divide. Comfort those whose cupboards are bare. Comfort those who are anxious about the future and worried about finances. Comfort them and guide us to see those needs and find new ways to meet them. We pray for those who are isolated, that we would find new ways to alleviate one another's loneliness. We pray to remember how to give thanks this week, especially as our gatherings are different this year. Guide us with the encouragement of our children and youth, always back to a heart of thanksgiving. Indeed, our hearts are full of gratitude for your many blessings, for this church family, for loved ones, for your many provisions. May we stay focused on you and keep our hearts open to blessings big and small, not letting what we miss distract us from what we have. We are grateful, holy, glorious shepherd, that you are the one who reigns in justice and in grace. And we long for this world to be more like your heavenly realm and pray that it would be so, praying the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
the world as Christ does. May we have the vision and compassion of our glorious shepherd. And now, may God hear and respond whenever you may call. May Christ be made known to you in all things. May the Holy Spirit open our eyes and fill our hearts with love. We remain in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you.